Hi. 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 Um, so why would you do anything after work? Uh, I th I'm thinking that leisure could be one thing, because you just like to draw, and you just do it after work also, or like uh, during uh, dinner, or, 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 um, or in the morning even. Uh, another reason would be maybe to improve your skills. If you see that uh, during work time, the, the tasks that you get do not improve your skills enough, so you can do it to improve your skills. And the reason why I do it, I think is to become more universal because I just want to work on different stuff at the same time, so uh, that's why it works for me. So I'm going to be basing all this uh, presentation on my own uh, experience. So I don't think it's a universal concept so that would work for everyone, but so just hear my story. Uh, I think there are two methods at improving uh, in this kind of thing. It's like the deep method, which is uh, you try to improve at one specific skill, like you draw characters and you, you go deep with it and you just improve that one thing to become a like, very good character drawer. And um, the, another method, which I'm going to talk about more, is like the wide method, where you try very different things, uh, which I think complement each other, but uh, they are still different things, in order to, to become better too. So the wide method is, uh, it could be different uh, branches of art, and it could be like concept art, but also you like uh, animation and uh, maybe prints or illustration, whatever. And also you try out uh, not just different branches of art, but you try out different styles, different techniques. Like you do some digital art, but you also like the work with paints and, and uh, pencils or, you know, blood splattering or something, whatever. And these are the, the fields of art I'll be talking about because I have some experience in them and I'll, um, I'll explain how I think they have been good to me in improving myself as a, as a professional artist. Uh, so it's concept art, so it's all kinds of like uh, creatures, uh, characters or, or environments you do for games, movies or, or animation. Uh, then it's illustration, which is uh, book covers, uh, album covers, prints, and advertising and stuff like that. Uh, comics, which is, I think, self-explanatory. And animation. Uh, in animation, I'm mostly working on backgrounds, so that's what I'll be talking about more. And then there's creative freedom, which is just whatever, as I was talking about blood or street arts or uh, painting or just even music and, and stuff like that. So concept art. Uh, I think it has quite big creative freedom because there are very different kind of games, different styles of games, different styles of movies or animation or whatever, especially if you do it, uh, do it for yourself or, or a small team you're working with. So the freedom is big. Uh, I think uh, concept art is very good for improving your skill because um, concept art has to be clear. You have to portray the idea in a clear way so that it would be understandable, so you have to uh, it, it just cannot be like art for art's sakes, it has to be understandable, so you have to have good perspective, that's what I wanted to write, perspective. Uh, anatomy, uh, light, uh, color theory and stuff like that, and you can learn by doing um, concept art, you can learn that stuff uh, I think really well. And as I did with this guy, I did, the mushroom whatever guy, I just thought of an idea for myself but I just did concept art. There isn't actually any project behind it or anything. I just did it to improve myself uh, in, 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 in my skill. Uh, then there's illustration. I think there's quite a good creative freedom, but uh, in illustration, most often you get someone who asks you to do the illustration, so I think it, it limits the freedom a bit. But of course, there are very different styles of illustration. Uh, one that involves like digital art, uh, and also um, graphic design or, or whatever, so you can choose which lane to go also from a variety of styles. 
And uh, from my experience, what illustration has done good for me is I had to work with uh, logos and fonts, which is a skill that actually became very, very useful to me at my current workplace, where I also, you know, applied logos and different fonts on, on some kinds of concepts and, and, and uh, environments, and it really helped knowing that stuff. Uh, comics. I haven't worked a lot on comics, uh, but uh, I'll try to say a few things. But uh, I think it's quite a big creative freedom uh, because you can choose whatever theme, especially if you're doing it for yourself also or, or with a few teammates. Uh, what, 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 what's really important I learned while doing comics is that uh, I learned a lot of line art. Uh, and it's very good to, for sketching, it's good for for doing ideas and, and uh, this is, I learned that more in doing comics than I did in, in the other, other fields of art. Uh, and also comics is very, the most important things are emotions, expressions and anatomy, more important than in the ones I, I think more important than in the ones I've described before. So doing comics helps you learn that. Uh, and also rarely does one do comics by himself, so you learn teamwork, like there's an artist and there's a, someone who writes the dialogue and, some, and stuff. Uh, and also, very important in comics is the art of storytelling. So I think that's also a, a, good, a good skill to learn. Or just to know s something about, not learn it like completely. Uh, animation, as I said, I'm doing uh, mostly backgrounds for animation. So I don't know about like uh, animation characters or, or like uh, programs doing that. But there's a good, I think a good uh, amount of creative freedom in it. Uh, especially if you choose it to, to do it yourself, like with some buddies or, or something like that. Uh, but you have to have in mind that it's really time consuming. If you want to create like a, a normal 10 minute cartoon or something, there's hundreds of backgrounds in it and I don't know how many hours uh, in animating it. For example, this is a project I'm working on currently and we chose this kind of detailed style for backgrounds and there's 70 backgrounds like that. So in a year we did, considering that I'm doing it like in evenings uh, and other free time, free time, we did 30. So it's like a two year project. Uh, you can learn different techniques doing uh, backgrounds. You can use uh, paint, you can use uh, digital art, you can use whatever, uh, cut out art, uh, cut out paper. Uh, also what's important when what I have learned doing backgrounds in animation is the uh, architecture and landscape. Uh, because a lot of animation that I did took place in cities and stuff and, and I learned uh, different architectural styles and, and uh, perspective. Well, it's also a team effort. Rarely does one do animation by himself because it's just too much work. And also, it's storytelling. I think you're, you're, you're better at storytelling after you do a couple of projects of animation. And then there's completely creative freedom. You do whatever. Uh, this is me painting a strange woman in a music video by Sol Ensembles just because I found that opportunity and, uh, and I embraced it and I, I loved it and I think it improved uh, me in a couple of areas. Uh, it has unlimited amount of uh, themes, technique, just do whatever you want, so that's like self-explanatory. But I think the most important thing in this creative freedom uh, thing is that uh, is you develop imagination uh, and I think that's a very important asset in, in a professional career especially when you have a lot of artists who are learning great techniques and everybody starting learning how to draw so imagination can be a thing that separates you in a unique way so I think it's a, a very good asset and of course freedom just do whatever who doesn't want to be free uh, there's also a reverse method to this creative stuff. Uh, this is what I do at work. I did a couple of years ago. Uh, just this uh, table for food, which is very detailed. It has to be very bright. All the objects have to be very concrete. Uh, but I had to turn it to the side a little bit for some reason. And I just, I think it looked interesting. And uh, I wondered wh whether I could do anything interesting with it. And I decided I could. So this is it. Uh, just I applied the style I was, I was already efficient at at work. I applied it to just strange illustration. I did these for myself. 
Uh, I sell them as prints actually, but, but I did this without any, any project or anything. Uh, and I think it worked. Okay. Uh, why is it good uh, to me? And this is me actually. Yeah, in normal scale. Yeah. And uh, because I'm, a, why, why does this method work for me? Because I think I'm a dynamic personality. I get bored quickly by one thing. And I think this, this, this kind of uh, jumping between projects helps me a bit to stay at one project longer. Uh, also, I'm self-taught. I haven't uh, had any education in, in art. So these different uh, art themes, they help me learn stuff that I haven't learned uh, or, or have no experience in. So, and also I want to be universal. More universal, not universal completely. Uh, and also I have a few examples of uh, famous artists who I think who also work in a couple of fields and I think that that makes them more unique and, and better. Uh, it's Piotr Jablonski who is a very famous uh, concept artist and illustrator who is working on the, 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 the what's the game? Dishonored. Dishonored, yes, franchise. Now, the art is amazing, but he also does quite a lot of uh, all kinds of illustrations, like for this is, for example, for a festival he did. Uh, and I think that you can see it in his art that he's not a completely traditional concept artist. H.R. Uh, Geiger, who is famous for his, uh, the creation of the Alien in the Alien franchise, but he actually was doing these kinds of drawings way before. And that's actually, I think, the reverse method that I was talking about when he was picked up because of his style, not, uh, not that uh, he was called to create, uh, not that the LM was already created. Uh, and I think this drawing was made way before the movie, like a couple of years before. Uh, Sergei Kolesov, who is also working on Dishonored games, but he also likes doing these strange illustrations for himself, like on the, on the right side. These weird, very weird stuff sometimes. Uh, but he has a very unique style, and I think that's why and, 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 and I think it helps. There's Adrian Smith, who, who is famous for the Warhammer series. Uh, he works a lot on uh, tabletop games, board games, and also creates like these figurines for the games. He designs for them. Uh, then there's Matei Kuchara, who is a famous uh, concept artist who worked on such awesome films like Gods of Egypt. And, uh, but he also, I, I don't know why, I don't think he has a spe specific project in his mind, but he just does comic stuff and, uh, and it's really good, too, so I think he's better because of that. And then there's John Ho and Alan Lee, the famous illustrators behind uh, uh, Lords of, uh, Lord, Lord of the Rings movies. And they were actually picked up because they were illustrating Lord of the Rings uh, books before that, and they knew the, like the, the content very well. And most of the concepts for the Lord of the Rings movies were actually done in pencil because they are traditional artists. And I think that's also an interesting example of, of people working in different fields. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Thank you for, thank you for the presentation. Um, someone has a question? I think, uh, I'm not in the position in North Current, I, I don't judge the portfolios, but I, I think uh, it depends on what are the, what do the old paintings show, if they show like good environments and stuff, I think they would work, yeah. And sketches, yeah, sketches always, are always good for, for a portfolio. But also, the best thing would also be to have like finished digital paintings, because that's what you would be doing. So I think people would like to see how well are you at, at that. styles and uh, I don't know, ways of working. So I'm curious like how much 
how do you dedicate time or, or you know, keep them completely in check or do you just go with the flow and explore as you feel? Uh, basically, when do you sleep? Uh, I'll have a couple of beers and you'll see when I sleep. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, I just, uh, I made it a habit of uh, doing at least something at, uh, when we have a... Lunch. Lunch. <laughs> Sorry. When I'm having lunch, I'm, I'm doing it like, I have a habit of like eating in like a half an hour and then spending half an hour on the stuff I'm already doing. Uh, also, if I wake up a bit early, uh, I live near my work, so I don't travel a lot, so I have like an hour in the morning, I also do some stuff. Uh, evenings are good always, and, and sometimes I dedicate weekends to that, so... Uh, it's not... Uh, I, I, it's difficult for me to do these like projects quickly, that, that's right, but uh, they take time, but I still try to do them and finish them, if I can. Thanks. Any more questions? Uh, you say your staff taught, but do you think there's some skills that you have to learn one way or another, let's say, through online schooling or actually on the spot at work? Well, I, I had a few like short courses, uh, but uh, some education, I think, would have been, of course, very useful to me, but I just made a lot of uh, bad choices in choosing what I would like to do and stuff like that. and. That's just what I had to do. I like, had to learn myself because I didn't have any time and actually didn't uh, have any money already to spend on, on education, so I had to learn myself. Yeah, no problem. When did you start drawing? Uh, well, actually, I was drawing. Sorry, the question was when did you start drawing? No. Yesterday, <laughs> for the presentation. No, I, I started drawing really early, uh, but it, I, it was never professional until I actually dropped it for a couple of years, then my friends started doing these art festivals and said, well, your old drawings look cool, maybe you should hang some on the walls. And that was about, I think, uh, six years ago, or something like that. But then also I was working in uh, advertising and that's where I started drawing a bit more because uh, I, I, I used to do, how do you call it? Uh, I used to do some illustrations and advertising, but they were really simple and I never thought it would be a career. I thought, I thought I'd have a career in being an art director in advertising, actually. But then that didn't go so well and uh, I somehow started uh, drawing more and I figured, you know, the, the market was growing and it's a good opportunity. I remembered that I liked drawing before. I picked up really well and, and I think it worked. It's a long story, but it's very strange, but... Maybe in a couple of years I'll, I'll be more, more clear on that. Is that it? If it is, then...